My, my favorite um, part of the early uh, part of your 10 minute sequence is the description, the man's description of the Guernica painting. Yeah. And the, and the dissonance between his understanding of his own Guernica life as a mm -hmm. regular citizen of that place, his sort of um, reckoning, I guess I would say, with the famous um, mm -hmm. Guernica that the world knows through art. And uh, to me, it's absolutely fascinating to watch the sort of slippery description going on, like, well, you know, if it had been a donkey, that would be one thing, but, you know, and then there's that eye in the painting, and I, I just love that um, sort of feeling of near and far away mm -hmm. that, that happens in that description. And I also think that um, I'm, I'm reminded of a story in Harriet uh, Semi's book on public art about the New York City Public Library Lions and the, the story of how much they were hated and that sculptor's awful and, mm -hmm. and now, you know, it's on every keychain and t-shirt and it's all, it's, it's New York already, those lions, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, you know, for him to understand that the world sees the painting mm -hmm. and, and knows him, he's, it, I almost sense he comes to peace with it somehow in, mm -hmm. at the end of his description. And to some degree, I think that that dissonance and those small ruptures are an interesting part of what um, the life of a public work is. ¿Habías visto el cuadro de Picasso cuando estuviste allí? No. ¿Y qué tal qué tal te parece aquel cuadro? El primer cuadro de Picasso lo vi muchos años después, el año sesenta y tantos. Me lo enseñó el que era alcalde de Guernica, que era amigo mío, en Z. Luego Eta le, le mató en un sello de Checoslovaquia que habían publicado. El sello era el cuadro de Guernica, me enseñó el resto. Pues yo la verdad es que al principio no reconocí Guernica en el sello aquel. O sea, para los Guerniques es, claro, el tipo de cuadro que es, la forma como está, y los elementos que aparecen, pues no. Aparecen un caballo y un toro que no son muy propios de. De aquí. Si hubiera sido un burro, era más propio. El caballo no. Sí, aquí en el burro, pues todas las aldeanas traían. Eh. Y el toro, pues tampoco era muy. muy... Hubo, solía de vez en cuando, plaza de toros que montaban de madera para alguna fiesta o de otra, pero no era típico de aquí. Bueno. Y por eso en el pueblo no se reconocía el. el, el, el era el, el, el algo de el artista. El, sí, era el del artista y además, pues, claro, aparecen cosas muy raras, un ojo y una historia que aparecen por allí. Y no, no se, se reconocía. El... Entonces no tiene el, el, sen sí, el aunque, sentido... Aunque después, por el, el impacto que ha tenido en todo el mundo, uh -huh. pues entonces pues claro, la gente pues, ha, ya ha ido asimilando de que esto es Guernica también. Porque ha dado a conocer a Guernica al mundo, a, a lo que aquí ocurrió, y entonces se ha asimilado y, y ya pues sí. Really, what he, he says there is the gist of what I have been trying to do in this Guernica work, mm -hmm. which is juxtapose, in a way, fiction with reality mm -hmm. and, and pose as a question what it means to us now, mm -hmm. us meaning artists, in mm -hmm. fact, mm -hmm. in this century um, of our own, or, or the power of image making. And he himself, Luis, is a painter himself. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. and. Um, so he was, what he said was spoken with great sensitivity, mm -hmm. but also sincerity. Mm -hmm. You know, they really did respond that way. Mm -hmm. You know, just, and, and again, I could speak endlessly about, about just that and how both at White Box and in its public um, uh, life, mm -hmm. this work is constantly about um, establishing relationships, relationships with this century, with, with what happened in the aftermath of a bombing and survival, with, um, with again, you know, what we see as an icon of, of art now mm -hmm. as political symbolism with what in fact actually happened. Mm -hmm. But um, in the end, just, and, and I, so I just mentioned all those things, those are many layers of this, but in the end, one of the things that is actually interesting 
um, anecdotally, is that Guernica as a village, um, life has really not changed. And it has, while there is Guernica the coffee cup and Guernica the lunch mat and everything else, <laughs> the placemat, there really, it continues to be uh, the same life that, ha that people have experienced there pre-bombing as well. I mean, except for perhaps m much more embitterment, but their lives continue mm. in very much the same way. And, and that also was very interesting to me in doing this work. Mm. So, um, and you know, I, I just actually will say one more thing before, before I move back into you in terms of storytelling for me personally. Um, it, I have a very complicated relationship with it because, and that's also why I was really interested in talking to you more because of the density of your image making. Mine always, my own practice always questions the image and I am inherently suspicious of being seduced by an image. That's part of why I guess the juxtaposition of, of the Guernica painting with the people's stories is so poignant for me. I, I, really, I really do question it a lot. I worry about it all the time. I worry about object making. It's part of what draws me into working in the public in a much more physically interactive way. And, um, and so, yes, that is a part of, of this whole, his response to the Picasso painting and the eyes and the horse and the whole thing is that, you know, where, where did Picasso's imagination go with this? How do we now interpret it? What, what, what does it all mean? In one of the interviews that I had with one of the survivors, she had mentioned radios being tossed into people's yards um, as, and sewing machines, and that radios were really the, the most important form of communication in the 1930s. And so for me, it was very poignant to use a, a radio as that. Tossed and, into people's yards. Well, when the, um, when the um, villages were pillaged and burned, mm -hmm. they were, houses were robbed, and people's radios, which were very sacred, and sewing machines and other possessions were thrown around. And so mm -hmm. the, ra the radio itself seemed to make sense. As a metaphor is also, or, or as an object, it was also going to give sound. And I felt that if I could make it in a small, unobtrusive way, mm -hmm. it would just sit there on the bench, and people would then just maybe listen to it. And it was also kind of a nice contrast to all the big phallic objects known as sculptures in Lower Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And this was a sculpture that really wasn't and mm -hmm. isn't. And in terms of the permanence and its longevity, yes, it would be very nice if it was permanently somewhere. <laughs> it's built to last. It is built to last. And it was yeah. built to take a lot, a lot knocks as well mm -hmm. there. I mean, and people would jump on it and sometimes mm -hmm. use it as Chinese food trays for their lunch. And, <laughs> You know, it took it took in that in that short one month time um, quite a bit of abuse, but it mm -hmm. withstood it. <laughs>